Let's look at what happens with this uh, level translator, level shifter for I2C. We're going to start with the mode when both devices are off. We have, if this transistor is off, this means the gate voltage is low. Uh, we have no drain current, no drain current. Pretty easy if there's no drain current there. Uh, we know that there's no current flowing through this uh, pull-up resistor, so this voltage is going to be 3.3 volts. This one over here, same situation, no current through this device. And this is going to be 5 volts. Resistor pulled up. Gate voltage of this transistor is 3.3 volts. Source is 3.3 drain is 5 volts. If we think about whether there's a channel on this side, well we're uh, using, at least for this, that our threshold voltage is 2 volts just for something that's about what we have uh, and it would use in the lab too. 0 volts here, we have no channel. Uh, this is negative gate to drain, so we definitely have no channel and this transistor is in cutoff and because this uh, cathode voltage is higher than the anode voltage, this is the source uh, or a body to drain PN junction. There's no current through the diode. All right, going to move down to the next one. We're going to 3.3 volt device drives the left segment low. That means this transistor turns on. And when it's on, we're going to have a uh, current that does flow, drain current that flows. And it's at start, this will be in uh, saturation mode, but uh, we're just looking at the final, final condition. And we're going to say that this transistor is in triode mode. The voltage here, we're going to say it's about zero, but really it would be RDS on of this MOSFET times, and then we have to look at our currents here. One current is this one, IPU1, our pull-up current. Uh, we'll stop here for a second and look at what this node is going to be. This is going to be really about zero. If you this is an on switch. We have 3.3 volts at our gate always. We do have a channel on the source side. On the drain side we're not sure, but we do know that when we do have a channel, this is zero volts, this is higher, starts off at higher. We are going to have current that does flow in the drain. This current flows this way and goes that way. All of this current flows not from this way, but our pull-up resistor goes that direction. So now we know what our current is. It's IPPU2. We choose the values of these resistors to be large enough and RDS on to be small enough that we can make the assumption that this is near zero or maybe um, less than 100 millivolts, 50 millivolts, 10 millivolts, something like that. We do have, eventually, after this current flows, we have Ohm's law, we have a voltage drop, so this SDA line is no longer 5 volts, it's less. If this transistor is very much on, and its on resistance is low, voltage across it is RDS on times IPU2 only, and we're just going to uh, assume or design uh, that this resistor is large enough and on resistance is small enough so that this low voltage is also zero or at least small and if that's the case very low voltage across here this voltage is also about zero and there we go now we can say gate train definitely have a channel and this transistor is in triad triad mode all right, that's, uh, that's okay. Next, we're going to say what happens when uh, at first we had this voltage was at zero. We're going to release this. This is going to go back to off. 
and in that situation let's see I'll use uh, blue for this this current is zero we need to include these capacitors here these are parasitic uh, anytime we have two different nodes we have a capacitance between them this is in the pico uh, range it could be up to uh, a few nano uh, you can look uh, what it does is it changes the rise time and really is a delay and uh, we can't have too much delay so we have to keep an eye on these time constants but we do need current to flow through this this device this voltage started at zero and when it's zero we do have current that flows into this capacitor and charge this up so zero is going to go up and you're going to look RC like because well it is next we have this transistor this transistor remember is zero here and zero on this side its voltage is going to start at zero and we have current that flows this way currents going to flow into our capacitor and charge it up make it go up but also this transistor was on it was in triode mode it's going to start in triode mode we'll have current that flows this direction so RPO, RPU2 uh, right now charges both capacitors now these voltages rise up I'm going to draw what this looks like down here on our uh, bottom part of the page this is time and we'll say V high or uh, we have 5 volts up there down here is V low or 3.3 volts if you want uh, want a number down here is V low minus the threshold voltage and that's the threshold voltage of our uh, MOSFET MN1 both of our voltages I'll say this is uh, SSDA on the right side and this is SDA on the left side we know that the SDA on the left side is going to be a lower voltage. We did that in the last page. So it's going to start here around zero-ish, perhaps not perfectly zero. It's going to zero-ish, not perfectly zero. It's going to come up. At the same time, our other SDA starts at near zero, but it is appropriate to draw it a little bit higher, and it's going to rise up. As this capacitor charges up remember this voltage right here is always 3.3 our drain voltage is going to go up 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 that means the voltage between gate and source gets smaller and smaller and smaller as it does that uh, at some point the voltage difference is going to reach the threshold voltage and this there will be no channel on the uh, left side or on the source side that happens at this voltage here this is the voltage required between gate and source uh, to get a channel to happen transistor goes up like this or our other current it just follows uh, RPU2 is charging both of these at about the same time now let's look on the left side now this transistor goes to no channel here this node is also going to keep rising so we went from yes yes to yes no or to no no and we went from triode mode to cutoff mode of our of this transistor it just shuts off about at the same time uh, on both sides uh, not exactly but uh, close enough for this all we're left with is no connection here and I see an RC circuit we're going to charge this capacitor the final value of that RC uh, charging is going to be over here and we can draw that in as that asymptote draw it here so we're going to do that and uh, continue on charge up and here we go as this rises the current that flows through RPU1 is doing its normal RC uh, shape 
Well, this red current that's charging the C bus, it starts out to be about equal, and then it, dis it, uh, it gets smaller and smaller as this transistor uh, turns off, as the channel gets thinner and thinner and finally goes to zero thickness. So you might say, uh, you would look at this and it's a smooth transition. This curve here is really not a pure exponential, but it looks like it. The slope won't radically change here. But from here on out, from this uh, first point, we have triode mode, and then we have cutoff. From here on out, it really is a pure RC charging exponential shape. Now if we look at the right side, we have RPU2, the current flowing through this resistor was supporting both this current and that current. Now, when this transistor is uh, cut off, all of this current goes to charging uh, C bus 2. And we'll see that, that uh, perhaps it's a little bit more. I'll put the slope to be a little bit. Remember, it's C, D, V, D, T is uh, current through that capacitor. You don't, won't really see much transition here. And the final value is going to be all the way up at V high. So it's SDA, I think is the name. And then this one is SDA on the left side. That's how it goes. So we've met our condition when there are no devices holding the bus down. Then the final values uh, rise up to their own power supply. 5 volts on the right, 3.3 on the left. Now we'll flip to the next case, which I think is the most interesting. Now we're going to have this device is going to turn on. See, I was using red over here, so it's going to turn on. This is goes to on. And we need to look at our waveforms uh, a little carefully to get to get where this is. Remember, we started at 5 volts here. This node started at 3.3. Can I use blue over here? 3, get purple. 3.3 on the left side. And 5.0. This transistor was cut off. And we're going to do something uh, interesting first. All right, when this uh, transistor turns on, current will definitely be flowing in the drain. This is 5 volts here. We start in uh, saturation mode, actually. Remember, saturation mode is about constant current. So I will draw a straight line when we're discharging a capacitor. We have current that's going this way discharging C bus 2. And at the same time, there's a, the current going this direction through the pull-up resistor uh, starts to increase as this SDA line on the right uh, increases, gets larger. All right, as this voltage drops, it's going to go down. We'll uh, start out our plot uh, here next. All right, so here's our plot our time axis, make this nice and big. Uh, here's time over here. V high, V low. Uh, we also have, I'm going to put V low minus 0.6. We'll see why that's in a second. V low uh, minus V threshold. And I'll, I'll probably say this again, but uh, the order of these two depends on our threshold voltage. If our threshold voltage is bigger, it goes lower, and so on. So don't pay attention to the order of these, just that there's two different points uh, where uh, events happen. We start with our transistor in the off state. Our V high is going to start high and it's going to discharge. It's going to keep discharging, going down, 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 down. Well, what happens is we have 3.3 volts here. It's always 3.3 volts at the gate because that's how it's hooked up, our low or V low. Now our drain starts up high, goes down, 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 down. This no channel, no channel, no channel, down, 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 down. 
goes down a little bit. Now, remember that this node over here on the left started at 3.3 volts. When this hits 3.3 volts, now we have zero VDS. Now this goes down, down, down. Depending on the relationship of the threshold voltage and such, it could be that now we have 3.3 and then less than 3.3. Let's say 0.6 volts less. We will get some current flowing. We're going to forward bias this diode. And that current is going to uh, go that direction. And this is where we say in the plot it's VLO minus 0.6. We're going to actually go all the way down to VLO minus 0.6. And now uh, current flows in this diode. At that same time, our V uh, SDA on the left side is staying, here we go, is staying the same, 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 right till here. Now the diode is on, and I'm going to put a sub thing, and uh, what do I call this, the drain body diode, is turned on. So current flows, current's going to start flowing, and make this node drop. It's going to drop, drop, drop. This node is going to keep dropping. Okay. Right now it started to be 0 0.6 volts as it drops more. Well, the gates stay in high. Both of these nodes are dropping lower. We went like that. Now they both start going down. At some point, we're going to have a channel on the right side, form a channel. We're going to then form a channel on the left side. This transistor is going to go into triode mode. And that will be when we'll hit triode mode when we have a channel on both sides, which is going to be this point here. Uh, no, this will actually go a little lower. And our blue one goes down to triode mode. Really in between here is saturation, but it's a very, very short interval. We go down, 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 down. We get into tri triad mode. And this one is RDS. RDS is getting smaller. As we turn the transistor on more, our voltages are going to go down, down, down. We're going to go down to zero. And then these are going to get closer together as RDS gets smaller. And then our voltages are going to end up final value down to zero, both SDA and SDA, blue and red. So what happened is our voltages stayed high. We turned on this transistor, this transistor it went some saturation mode, and then it ended up in triode mode. Um, uh, eventually, as the drain voltage got low enough, both of these, this went down, this one kind of comes down, we turn this on, the diode actually helps us out a little bit. It's okay to forward bias it in this situation, because uh, then the transistor turns on and takes over, and current flows this way through the drain, uh, through the, the channel instead of the diode. And the channel, I guess, shorts out the diode. Both of these go down to zero. That's our condition that we need. Any device, this one, the left one, will pull both down to zero. When it's let go, when it let goes, both devices go up. We go up to 3.3 or go up to 5. When this device pulls down, it pulls down both on both sides of this transistor. You have to be careful that this uh, MN1 gets in this direction. Uh, with the diode going that way, uh, facing, or so that this diode is reverse biased when we're off-off, when this is high. 
Uh, in the Phillips application note, uh, it says that there's not really a limit for how high this high voltage can be. It's a matter of can this drain voltage, drain source voltage, this transistor handle that much drain source voltage. Uh, that's what we have. That's our waveforms, and that's how this level shifter or level translator works in I2C mode.